Welcome to Pine Hill is the story of a recently reformed drug dealer, Shannon Harper, who gets big news so he has to go back to his former life and his estranged mother and then search for peace in, the, uh, in upstate New York. The movie all started with when I found a dog in real life um, and tried to find the owner and then two months later at 11.30 at night someone came up to me and said, that's my dog and we had an hour and a half fight about that. That person was Shannon Harper and the next morning I asked him if he wanted to make a movie about that story. And that first story was uh, Prince William, a short, that is now the uh, in a different form. It's the opening scene of Welcome to Pine Hill and the movie follows Shannon Harper over the course of his journey. The morning after we had our, our long argument, um, I pretty much didn't sleep that night so I, I was thinking about the process of what had just happened. And for me, it revealed a lot about race and class and social conditions and fundamentally how one loves something. In the course of that initial conversation, I could sense that something was different. Like he was a really interesting, sensitive guy. And he said, you know, to me later, well, I could tell you were different because you just kept talking. We spent, you know, six to eight, one or two hour sessions, three hour sessions, just kind of talking about race and class and you know, very small details about that night and everyday life. For him, we had three uh, cinematographers shooting with us, um, generally simultaneously. The cast was almost completely um, non-trained actors or people who had never acted before in their lives and hadn't considered acting before then. There was a lot of reality pouring into it because that was the idea, to have reality spill in. And in a number of places it spilled in, and kind of remarkable ways and a lot of times that was very messy um, but the idea was just that to have the messiness of reality and the poetry of reality come out in the final product. My general uh, directive throughout was reality never stops, never stop until we say cut, until I say cut and so the c takes were long, the actors didn't know when it was stopping, sometimes we were not rolling camera when things were happening, sometimes we were rolling camera and things weren't happening but it was very long and intense. Stylistic influences are twofold. One is the kind of, I would say, the contemporary like naturalist group of filmmakers, like the Dardenne brothers particularly, but Kelly Reichert's Old Joy, um, Still Life by, I think it's Zsa Zsa um, And then on the other side, I come very much like my initial passion for film was, is Tarkovsky, Kislovsky, particularly his movie Amateur, but Red, White, and Blue and uh, Decalogue. Um, and, that, that genre, so there's two kind of opposite poles. One's the extreme realism films, and then the other is this uh, more meditative, metaphysical group of films. I just showed it to Shannon last night for the first time, and um, it took a long while between schedules to get him to see it. And at first he was pretty uncomfortable with the idea of watching himself, but afterwards during the Q&A, it was very clear that he was really moved by the movie and surprised. And uh, as, he, as we were leaving, he said, it's really good, it's a lot better than I thought. <laughs> Which I don't know if he thought it was gonna be bad, but he said it was better than he thought, and um, you know, that was important to me.